Rosinha, and that's three, two for her, and the USA surely sunk here. Press, lovely turn. Oh, great goal. Christian Press, he lets it back in it. Lovely ball to Rapino. And it's in. There's the equaliser. Barbara Rapino in the post. And the USA out of jail. Megan Rapino with the strike. Kelly O'Hara. Cross to the near post. Bouncing around. There's the goal. Gilliatt. Scraps it home. And the USA have come back from nowhere to lead 4-3. And after that amazing comeback against Brazil, tonight at the Stop Up Center, the United States close out play in the Tournament of Nations against old rival Japan. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Women's National Team. We're coming to you live from the StubHub Center in Los Angeles, California, as the U.S. hosts Japan in match day three of the Tournament of Nations. Welcome along, I'm Ian Dark, alongside World Cup winner and Olympic champion Julie Foudy. A breathless game against Brazil. Three goals in the last 11 minutes for the U.S. and suddenly the mood's upbeat again. And they needed that. That would have been the first time that the U.S. had lost four home games in one calendar year. And mind you, the U.S. right now looking at new players, tinkering still. Jill Ellis has said this is still the, the process. This is the plan. But boy, did they need that more than ever right then. I think one thing we've learned from this tournament is Megan Rapino has to play. She was involved in everything and in that, that Brazil game. And that is why she is my Continental Tire Analyst Corner player. She has been so good as we've seen in the NWSL, but was on an 18-game goal-scoring drought with the U.S. Women's National Team. This is her second assist, and that was the comeback goal, really, that brought U.S. back to life. And here's the goal that ends that drought. Megan Rapino finding that near post. She has been so good in this tournament. She's healthy. She's confident. It's great to see her in this form. Yeah, she feels in very, very good shape after some pretty agonizing times with injury. And uh, wide on the left, I think that's where the U.S. need her and where she can be most influential. Mind you, Japan have got some of their World Cup veterans in the lineup today. And a good new name as well, Yuka Momiki, who's got a couple of goals from the bench, starts this time. And she's getting the start, but she's been coming off in the first two games. You saw her there in the first game for Japan. This one against Australia. She's going to be their offensive threat for Japan, but also Japan in a rebuilding phase as well. But that's a player to watch. Three of the last four global finals have been USA against Japan. This should be a good one. And when we return, we will have the starting lineups for you. I am the last one. The man in black destroyed everything in my world. Earth will be next. Get used to the carnage. I have to stop him. The Dark Tower. I'm surprised you're even sitting up. I'm stronger than most. Ready PG-13. Hello, Discover Card. Hi, can you tell me about these new social security alerts I keep hearing about? Uh, sure, just sign up online. Then we'll alert you if we find your social security number on any one of thousands of risky websites. Wow, that's cool. How much is it? Oh, it's free if you have a Discover Card. I like free. <laughs> yeah, we just want you to be in the know. Oh, hey, sushi. Oh, I smell it. <laughs> You're making me. <laughs> yeah, being in the know is a good thing. Know if your social security number is found on risky sites. Free from Discover. Welcome back to the 2017 Tournament of Nations. It's USA v Japan. These two met in the World Cup final in 2011. After two extra time periods, it was 2-2. High drama, penalty shootout. The USA failed to score with three of their four. Man of the match, Ayumi Kaihori, the Japanese goalkeeper. Japan winning on penalties 3-1, their first world title. But in Canada, revenge. Carly Lloyd got four, including a 16-minute hat-trick. USA win 5-2 to capture the World Cup for the third time. 
So these two teams know each other very well indeed. There's a great crowd here as well at the StubHub Center in Carson, just south of Los Angeles. Two teams in the tunnel here and a really good atmosphere for this last game in the uh, inaugural Tournament of Nations. It will become a bit of a fixture. There's another one next year involving the same four teams. What can we expect, Julie, do you think? Well, we know that both teams right now are a little bit of a rebuilding phase. And rebuilding meaning it's it's supposed to be like that. It's 2017. You have actually two years before the World Cup. And there's no need to panic yet with the U.S. losing three games in this calendar year. But what you've seen from the U.S. side is you've seen some different formations. You've seen different lineups. We've heard Jill Ellis say repeatedly that this is part of the process. I can't see players when they play against teams. No disrespect. But to teams like Russia, I need to play them against the top 10 teams in the world. And she has been getting good looks. And, uh, and boy, did they need that three-goal comeback against Brazil in the second game here at this Tournament of Nations, or else the U.S. would have gone four losses in one calendar year, which has never happened before. Four home losses as well. Yeah. Now that certainly lifted the mood and I think it just gave a bit of confidence to these players. It'll be interesting to see how they respond after that, having gone through that kind of drama, because it was a bit clunky to use your word <laughs> until then. Yes, choppy was another adjective I used frequently. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit sputtering and I think that's to be expected because you are playing with teammates who haven't necessarily played alongside each other there's a relationship you have to build and when you're going through that process you don't have the chance to build that relationship but i think it may have masked masked the greater issue was which is can this team get a formation and lineup in place that looks dominant again because at points we've lost a little bit of swagger it seems like with the united states they say it never rains in Southern California, to quote the old song, and it isn't raining tonight. Another day in paradise, really, in this part of the world, certainly if you come from where I do. It's the national anthems, of course, first of the two competing nations. ...of Japan to be followed by the playing of the national anthem of the United States. USA the three times World Cup winners and four times Olympic champions. One thing the USA have never done yet is retain the World Cup. And Jill Ellis's team could do that conceivably in the next tournament coming up in 2019 in France. 
Japan, full of good technical players. They've always had that about them. Still trying to find the right blend, I think it's fair to say, and Jill Ellis would agree. She says she has some answers from this tournament, but she's not going to say what they are yet. She's keeping those to herself. This is her lineup today. There are three changes. Kristen Press is back in the styling lineup after her goal. Julia Ertz, too, with that last minute winner. She gets a start this time, and Mallory Pugh's back in, too. And in particular, Sauerbrunn back in that center back position. We saw that midfield experiment with her in the last game. Julie Ertz getting the start of that holding midfield, but most important, sticking with that 4 3 3. She's been shuffling through lineups, and this one looks like it may stick for a little bit for the United States. Japan's head coach, Asaku Takakura, is relatively new to the job. She made her debut for Japan as a player when she was just 16 years old. She's trying to make Japan a power again at a World Cup. Those three players highlighted there were all part of the lineup when Japan played the USA in the 2015 World Cup. Those two midfield players, very good. We talked about Momiki in the open, who's going to give a lot of that offensive firepower, but Sakaguchi and Itsugi. Itsugi, of course, plays for the Seattle Reign in the NWSL. Those are two players that are going to drive the engine, and you talk about a technical team. They love to play, so someone connecting the dots, those are the two that are going to do it for Japan tonight. Only one point in the tournament for them so far, three for the United States. We do know that Australia have won this Tournament of Nations with a 100% record. They beat Brazil 6-1 in the game earlier on. We'll show you the goals from that a bit later on. But that's not really the issue here for the USA. They're trying two years out from a World Cup to really get themselves going, and they will want this win because, obviously, this is a little bit of a grudge match, USA v Japan. They also played, apart from those two World Cup finals, the last two World Cup finals, in the Olympic final in London when Carly Lloyd got two goals and the USA won that. There's the goalkeeper. Keeps her place despite a, well, fairly horrendous error. Alisa Nea, horrible thing to happen live on TV as well against Brazil after 70 seconds. But no crisis of confidence. She's had a talk with Jill Ellis. She keeps her place. That's the right decision, isn't it? Absolutely. And and we even said, you know, did you consider taking her out at halftime? And she said, absolutely not. you got to stick with a player. And I totally agree. The referee, by the way, is Caroline Chenard from Canada. The final game of the Tournament of Nations, which has been very enjoyable to behold out on the west coast in Seattle, San Diego, and now just south of LA. And here's Kristen Press straight away for the US. Will they be a different team here? That's Pew rather scuffling the shot, but it was a very incisive looking break straight away. And that is exactly the start they want because they want to get press. She's playing that high center forward. They want to get her behind the back line, stretching that back line. Flicked on there by the number five. Madoka Haji, she's only winning her second cap here. That's the uh, record all time. USA leading 26 to 1 in terms of victories, with seven games being drawn. The one win for Japan, for official purposes, was at the Algarve Cup in 2012. Not the World Cup final. <laughs> they, don't, they don't count the World Cup final. Because it went to a penalty know, shootout. That's the that's this crazy. for you. It was a, a drawn match for official purposes. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't win it after all. <laughs> yes, they try telling them that. <laughs> they have got a lot of new names in their roster for this event, Japan. They were rather found out by the Australians, but Australia, I think, have served notice, really, that they will be uh, maybe ready to go beyond the quarter-final stage in big tournaments that are coming up. It's Casey Short with a nifty piece of work on that left-hand side. And here's the exciting thing if you're an Australian fan. And those are young players, 22, 23. They've got a good one or two cycles left in them. That's a good team. Work to do back there for Dahl Kemper. It's a lively start from Haji. Who's come in. She seems to have a bit of a roaming role. The number 10 is a familiar figure to followers of women's soccer. Mizuo Sakaguchi wearing a 111th cap. She scored in the shootout when Japan won the final of the World Cup in 2011. Watch her 
and the number six, Rumi Utsugi, alongside who plays in the United States for Seattle Reign. Good players, both of those, and they could dominate the midfield if the USA aren't up to the task here tonight. This heads it on. Played back in again by Utsugi. This is Samashima to lay it forward. Another experienced player, 30 years of age now, has played in two World Cup finals. I have to say, I like Becky Sauerbrunn at that center back position <laughs> better than that holding midfield experiment. Which is no disrespect to the way she played there. It's just no. that she's a lot better in her proper position. And I think, to be fair to the coach, she, she tried that out. And I think it's the last we'll see of it, if we're honest about it. And Julia is in there today. She plays there for her club. And she certainly had a bit of dynamism on the ball now. Julie Johnston that was recently married. Rapino with the layoff. Picked up by Tanaka who's played all the games in this tournament so far. Sakaguchi to lay it forward. Hurts to Lloyd. Rapino with the diagonal run ahead. It's Kristen Press again. She's really got good acceleration, this Kristen Press. Made a difference when she came on, certainly, and scored a very fine goal too. So her confidence ought to be sky high. It's Kelly O'Hara. Carly Lloyd again. Mewis to lay it forward. Now Pugh. Short. Very good play by her. One question mark against Casey Short is, can she do the attacking side of the job as a left back? Yeah, they know how good she is defensively, and she's got the pace clearly defensively to track those strikers down, but really wanting to see, and you can see how many different players Jill Ellis has been testing in that outside back position which one's going to stick offensively as well but already a much better start in this first five for the United States more patience they're moving the ball around what the difference a win can make made towards her she couldn't quite get there with the head of O'Hara plays it back in again it just needed a touch Ertz couldn't provide it there will be another corner to the US who've started fast Ertz always going to be a, a target on these, and especially on that near post. We'll see on this second one, she's going to make a similar run, I'm guessing. She is so dangerous in the air. There's another Megan Rapino corner with chance of USA. USA Lloyd couldn't quite reach it in the way she would have wanted to direct it goalwards. Only one goal for Carly Lloyd, not like her in 20. 17 I'm sure the goals will start to arrive again soon yeah when you look at the year she's had and that's the remarkable thing she's doubled her scoring rate in her 30s she had 15 goals in 14 2014 18 in 2015 and 17 in 2016 that's a hard pace to keep with said the woman who retired at 33 <laughs> But occasionally misses it, yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot. A nice a really evening. nice field, a nice evening surface. like this. We've had some nice services. That, that's what gets me back out there. Sumida. Laid wide here for Nakajima. Driven across the face of goal, still not properly away. Once again, Haji was causing a few problems. Here's Carly Lloyd. That's aimed towards Rapino. Somebody's got to take responsibility, and the goalkeeper, Yamashita, does exactly that. She's the number one goalkeeper at the moment, though she's only won 10 caps so far. That's for the champions in Japan. Sorry, Julie. I was just going to say the, the history of, of the Japanese team is, of course, we've known how technical and skillful they are. And 
But one of the areas that I've always felt they could grow in is in that goalkeeper position. And Yamashita has been good for them. And only those 10 games and the ones I've seen, she looks athletic, she co she's confident, she holds balls. That may be a huge boost for that Japanese team. Tonight at Sugi, by the way, it looks like she's joining the defense. A play defensive midfield as well. They rested quite a few of their better players in the last game against Australia, and it rather showed. They're all back this time. League flourishes in Japan, three divisions. Nice play that, wasn't it, by Sakaguchi? Ball's been given away, though, by Sumida. Rapino. Oh, that's a great effort. He just skimmed the top of the bar as well from Megan Rapino. And, that, and that's not the player you want to give the ball away to on a technical error, because this is what she's going to do. And this is the confidence of Megan. I mean, typically Megan might have maybe pulled that back, built it up a little bit. She's going away from goal at a weird angle and still tries to get it and almost does. Almost catches the goalkeeper on that one. And, and, and that's how confident Megan Rapino is right now. And she has shown it in the NWSL, the leading goal scorer with 12 goals for Seattle right now. Including a hat trick against Sky Blue in a 5 4 thriller the other day. Press with the layoff. Good battling to win it back, Mallory Pugh, and that's a little on the careless side from her, and Tanaka can pick it up. Well won back by Juliet, played for it by Mewis, Rapino's in here, massive chance! And she's put it into the side, netting the goalkeeper, to be fair, got something on that. You have to say, good save, Yamashita. And this is all with Julie Ertz winning that battle in the midfield. That's the difference that holding midfielder fight can do because immediately you're springing balls in the final third. Yamashita coming out, getting something on it, cutting the angle, but Sam Mewis in that seam there, maybe could step into that, pull it back. Rapino, this is the best we've seen really from the USA in this tournament in the early stages of the game anyway. They look much more dynamic. The Rapino corner. Doing the nick of time by Ichise. Back in again, Ernst couldn't quite reach it. Japan at full stretch back there to keep the US out. This is more like it. Much better rhythm. You're right. And there's more of an urgency. We've, we've talked about it the last couple games. It just seems a little bit flat, a little bit slow. But here's the break. Haji. She's got a couple of players up there with her, including Tanaka, who wanted that played in behind. It wasn't the best ball that from Haji. They rather threw that away. Game very, very open. Press, Rapino with the angled run. Rapino looking for the finish. And Rapino provides the finish. She can do no wrong. Well, the goal was coming, no doubt about it. Great to see Rapino showing what she can do, because look at this one. The long ball in. And she has the patience to let that player, she gets her to bite on that first one, lets her go down, and then lets the ball, look at this again. She gets her to bite, fakes that shot, she bites, she lets the ball roll, and then pulls it across goal when she's coming across the goalkeeper. Good players will always tell you, and you were a good player, Julia, very good player that they can slow the game down in that situation. The composure there was quite something. Yeah, because your instinct for a lot of players, of course, is to crack it right away. If she had Japan, that Japanese defenders coming in and blocking that shot, what a beauty that was. 
Fuji again. Some misplaced ball, been a couple of those from her. You have to look after the ball better. The good Japan sides that reached to World Cup finals could certainly do that. Of course, they don't have that excellent midfield player. We used to like watching her. I am Mayama these days. And of course, there's no Hamari Sawa. I was going to say, no Sawa. Who some of the US players got to know, I believe. Did you know, you know her? <laughs> Kate Markgraf knows her. She certainly does. Very good oh, player. Oh, at some point in this game, we're going to tell that story. The best prank we ever played on Kate Markgraf. <laughs> Kate, you must be watching right now. It'll have to wait. <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> that's, a second, that's a second half story. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Abby Dahl Kemper for the US. And towards Rapino again. And they do have to cut the supply line to her. Otherwise, she might cause havoc. That's another great ball to Press, who turns and shoots. She might have played that back into the path of Pew. Have a look at this goal again. Just look how composed Rapino is. And what a nice little ball in by Press. Perfect pace, and she lets. It run by her. Look at this little little shimmy. All it takes is a little fake that she's going to go down, lets it run, and then has the presence of mind not even just to go on that side, that post. She pulled it across because the keeper's coming across. And after 18 without a goal for the USA, two in two for Megan Rapino, who without any question at all has been the USA's player of this tournament. Let's cut it out again. She's making a difference in there in the midfield. Seems to be everywhere. Now Casey Short, the place for Chicago. Sam Mewis scored in the last game. Lovely ball that to Pew, who just let it slip under her foot. Here's the 19-year-old again. We've been talking a lot, haven't we, you and I? in this tournament about the changing world order and that was rather underlined today when Denmark and the Netherlands made it through about that? For the European Championship final. Netherlands beating England 3 to nil. Emphatically. Neither of those two ranked in the top 10 in the world ahead of that tournament. Germany, France, England, Sweden all dumped out. England beaten 3 nil by the Netherlands today. Germany dumped out in the quarters. Yeah. They'd won the last six Euros. That's such a great sign, too, for women's soccer. Just getting that many more countries enthused about it, supporting it, funding it. As we all know, that's the constant issue is support and funding for the women's program. So you love to see the pact. It was almost 30,000 people rocking it in their orange in the Netherlands for that semifinal. Yeah, and they need the lift because their men's team have been uh, having a bit of a horror story in recent times. That and the performance of the Australia team at this tournament as well is something just to make a note of if you're a form student of women's soccer. You had four in this tournament, four teams in the top eight in this tournament. And Australia comes out, it was the lowest ranked at number eight, comes out on top. And similar to the Netherlands win, another emphatic win, three of them for Australia here. And just starting to get their passing game going a little bit on that uh, far side with Yuka Mamiki involved. We know she can finish. We've seen it in this tournament. It's only her tenth cap. She's already scored three times for her country. Nakajima on the chase. And that's the thing with Japan and, and what the U.S. has done well in this first 17 is if you can make them chase and have to defend, then they don't want to get into that battle. They want to keep the ball. They want to hold it, be technical, make the other team chase. The U.S. doing a better job in this game of keeping it, getting a little bit of rhythm. This Kristen Press again towards Mallory Pugh. That's not a bad idea, just a little bit heavy. And again, the goalkeeper playing the sweeper-keeper role to some effect. Six U.S. players have started every game in this tournament. Haven't 
seen much of Sydney LaRue, just one substitute appearance. Morgan Bryan's injured, by the way, and Crystal Dunn, too, didn't suit up for this game because of the ankle injury she got the other night. Short to play this in, that's another well-measured ball to Press, who tried the instant volley, and what a lovely pass. Yeah, it's just confirmation of what's happened in the European Championships. Those semi-finals there today, the Netherlands beating England 3-0, Denmark won on penalties against Austria. And the finals on ESPN2 on Sunday. Austria in its first ever European Championships. It's a nice debut. trying to make a nuisance of her so if they haven't really got it going as an attacking force yet Japan but that's because the US have been closing them down and winning the ball back quickly all over the pitch Dahl Kemper started every game in the tournament she's been much admired by Jill Ellis with her composed displays in defence. Seems to have that place tied up just for the moment. Yeah, I think there's there's still a lot of movement on that back line, though. We saw Casey Short playing in that centre back position, but I think that's a consequence of Jill trying to find that outside back. Carly Lloyd to Kristen Press. You can see what the idea was. Trying to pick up Pew, who gets the ball now anyway. Very exciting talent, the Washington Spirit player. O'Hara, that ought to be the goalkeepers, which she's not really got there. The flag goes up anyway, and so Lloyd tried to attack it. Our next MLS match is Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern. That's 11 in the morning Pacific time on ESPN. Very hot weather forecast up in Portland. That's... Uh, change kickoff time will be at Providence Park Western Conference clash it is Portland Timbers and LA Galaxy a major league soccer presented by Audi also streaming live on the ESPN app talking about 107 aren't they up in Portland whoa yeah. crazy so they're going to be playing at midday <laughs> I know so let's switch it to 11 yeah. <laughs> Right, OK. <laughs> this is good performance from the USA so far. Sakaguchi. Nakajima. Did the ball go out of play? Yeah, it did. The whole ball did cross the whole of the line. And that's Ertz again, putting pressure on ball. She's all over the place. I like the lift she's given them. She's talking. She's directing. She's got a bite to her. And she said she got a bit of a kick the other day when it came out on the Tannoy system that the goal had been scored by Julie Ertz, that when it was the first time <laughs> she'd scored with her new name as a, as a married lady. And uh, she was she was very, very happy about it all. Zach is grinning at home. That's very cute. miss it games against Russia back in the spring for a wedding and a honeymoon congratulations to both of them is Becky Sabron never misses a minute it seems for the US with a loose ball that time from Mewis is Tanaka to pick it up for Japan Sumida wide now Mamiki Nakaguchi is just sitting a little bit deeper. Probably they need her to be affecting the game a little further forward, picking a pass or two to open up the US defence. That might be for later on. Momiki lays it back. Best move so far from the Japanese. And took a flick on the way through. It will be a corner. It'll be interesting to see, too, they have Utsugi playing more of a centre-back, deeper role, not in the midfield. We've seen her roaming in that midfield, and 
spraying the balls for Japan and really being that engine, how that affects them. Well, they brought her on at half time. They were resting a few, but they were looking so leaky at the back against Australia that they needed to shore it up, so they brought her into the defence as an experienced older head, and they've stayed with that for this game. Naya's got some work to do here and does beat it away in the end. Shot was from Nakajima. And this is where the U.S. is going to be keen to separate. When you have this much of the ball, you're getting their looks. It's been a constant topic of conversation with Jill Ellis about just being better in front of the goal, finishing chances. Nakajima, Abby Dahl Kemper was able to cut it out. She started the last four U.S. games now. Sumida to lay it back. Sakaguchi. She's been in the team for 11 years now since her debut. They've left out the striker Kumi Yokoyama for the first time in the tournament tonight. And uh, little extra ideas she brings in attacking areas. Maybe missing from their play. Sabrum wide for Casey Short. Good first touch by Haji and Nakajima. It's Nakaguchi directing the operations. <laughs> and a little shrug. Yeah. How about some movement then? <laughs> I wanted you wide. You give me nothing. She's looking to find where the space is. Manya playing it forward. It's Nakajima again. Just signs of Japan settling for the first time in the game until that. <laughs> <laughs> third cap for the left back Miko Manya. I think the big challenge for Japan too in this transition period when you lose a Miyama and a Sawa and some of these incredible legendary attacking players is they play pretty of course and they hold the ball and they keep the ball but are they ever going to have that bite where they have someone on the other end finishing balls and those two were so world class how do you replace that? With difficulty I think is the answer isn't it? Yeah. It's just that nous isn't it? Tournament now is experienced. Utsugi. It's on the speculative side, really. It's what uh, Sakaguchi is normally about. Pacey runs from deep. Has scored 28 times in a Japanese career over the years. That's a nicely picked ball. Haji turning inside. Then Tanaka. Sauerbrunn there to clean it up. So dependent. By the way, that uh, comeback against Brazil, that's the first time the US have ever come from being two goals down in the second half of a game to win. First time ever. A comeback from two goals down in matches, but not when it happened during the second half. So a little bit of history there. Yeah, I remember that. One of those was in, against France in the 2012 Olympics. But as you said, part of that comeback started in the first half. She seemed to lay it forward. Japan just playing a little higher up the pitch and Consequently, just starting to ask the odd question. No more than that. Played in towards Tanaka, nearly got there on the near post. Mallory Pugh had to get back and help her defence. Rapino, whose goal separates the sides, well taken too.
Kelly O'Hara, who has been used at left back as well in this tournament. Left back is possibly a bit of a problem position. Megan Klingenberg wasn't picked for this tournament, but uh, is still very much on the radar. And it's a position where Jill Ellis has rolled through quite a few players. Krieger has been on the bench. She hasn't gotten a look, however, this tournament. I think she says, because I know what Krieger can give me right now, I need to look at other players. When you ask Jill about that. Sakaguchi. Haji cutting inside Dahl Kemper, but she's having none of it. Well played by Abby Dahl Kemper. It's a good piece of defending again from her. Not the first. Former captain of the under-17 team, Abby Dahl Kemper. Played right here at UCLA. And apparently some very good kids coming through in the under-15, 16, 17s, we're hearing. Bruce Arena, the USA coach, is here tonight. His next assignment, Costa Rica in the World Cup qualifier. You'll see it on ESPN on September the 1st. Sonoka Galati there, the US soccer president there as well. Tobin so, Heath as well behind her. Uh, yeah, you were speaking to her last yeah, night. Yeah, I saw her yesterday. Had a good chat with her. She's injured, isn't she, at the she moment? She is, trying to get that back healthy. She's back out running and moving, so that's a good sign. Hydration break here on our... So great to see how well Bruce has done coming in with the men's team. Yep, hasn't lost yet. And they're going to have to make a change here. Taylor Smith is going to come on. She started the first two games, made her debut in this tournament to replace Kelly O'Hara. Another chance. Oh, Tanaka turned ever so well there. The ball wouldn't quite just sit there for the half volley. And this is the thing we know about Japan is they they hover, they stay close. And quickly this game can change. She doesn't look well, Kelly, does she there? I'm not quite sure what the um, what the story is for that substitution. Apparently she's not feeling too well, Kelly O'Hara. It is a particularly hot day here. Sabron heads it away. I say for the moment just lost a little of that early rhythm. Tanaka to lay it wide. And there's another part of the process. Taylor Smith getting the look in front of an Ali Krieger type right there. Taylor Smith only it's only her third cap ever with the national team. But getting another look. Also played at UCLA, was a forward, won a national championship there as well. So knows Abby Dahlkemper, who's alongside of her well, but played as a forward at UCLA and is converted for the courage as well as an outside back. To be fair, she's done okay in this tournament. Quite highly tried, of course, with the standard of the opposition. Whether she can build on that, I think, is the question now. It's a tough squad to get into and make an impact. It just feels like a little bit of a momentum shift here at 30... 31 minutes in the last five, 10 minutes. Japan having more of the ball, settling into this game a little bit more. And Sugi had to play into touch, picked up by Taylor Smith, and then Press winning a 90th cap, by the way. Now it's Pew. It's not accurate enough. Possession surrendered too easily, really. Who also played at UCLA? Let's stay on that okay. theme. <laughs> You're the official. Quickly. You're the official a, UCLA <laughs> spokesman tonight. I know. It's so unlike me. I love you. It's like a rival. <laughs> she had a hot minute there, actually, only. 
decided, no, I actually think I'm going to go play pro. Says the Stamford graduate. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Molly Lloyd to bring it down. Back playing a deeper role last couple of games. Almost like a conventional midfield player in the engine room, so to speak, rather than a bit further forward behind the strikers. She will be 37 by the time of the next World Cup. Fully intends to be a part of it all but it would be just a little bit of a question whether she can be the same effective player she was four years ago when frankly she was sensational and was one of the last two world player of the year awards Carly Lloyd good ball from Nakajima that one towards Tanaka Sakaguchi and there's Tanaka and off the line well very very close to an equalizer Julia it's getting back there heroic and took a Nasty knock doing it. Soon yeah. Japan had to equalize. And, and th this is what Japan does. They stay in it. They stay close. They get that second bounce. It gets lucky. They get another bounce because really Casey Short is there. And Ertz Ooh. recovering, knocking her leg on that post. But look at this recovery by Ertz. She never stops and really saves that one. That's great play. That's our old defensive instincts as a central defender kicking in there in the right place. But that, that hurts. Yeah, you can see she's just trying to stop there. Uh. Mm. Well, hopefully that's just an impact injury and nothing more than that. But great instincts, as you said, Ian, is... is so often we get caught in that situation ball watching and stop just for a half second second and that's the difference and Ertz knowing right away to cover. She won't want to come off that's for certain. I think her message to the physios were patch me up and get me back out there again as quick as but they've just got to make sure there that it's it's nothing more serious. But you'd think there might be a fairly hefty bruise. That post is not soft. No. In a way, they, they won't take a risk, of course, because they'll be thinking, too, um, about a club, won't they, as well, Chicago. Want to return these players in good shape, see if you can just walk that off. Few more assessments. Meanwhile, here comes the Japan corner in. Rapino wins the header. Comes up to Sumida. Sakaguchi is getting into more forward positions as well. Now. And there comes Ertz. Back, Back in. No problem that time for Naya. Painful but not game ending. Did you see winning the header? One of fourth, fifth and sixth caps at this tournament. Starting every game, they obviously like her. And the one thing I really, for, for young players playing in something like this against world top ten opposition is they'll learn a lot, or should. Yeah, yeah I mean, and again, no disrespect to, to some of the teams the U.S. plays, but the Costa Ricas and even the Mexicos, you know, you're not, you're dominating in a way that doesn't show you a ton. And you crave these games. And literally in the past, in this non-World Cup year after an Olympics, it's been a down year. Not as many games, not as good a quality of opponent. And that was one thing that Jill Ellis really wanted to change. Sakaguchi, who's inherited Omari Sawa's number 10 shirt. And I give U.S. soccer a ton of credit because it's hard to get these games consistently, to put on two home-based, hosting two big tournaments.
Japan starting to play well now. Keeping the ball, knocking it around quite pleasingly. This is the Japan we know, Sakaguchi. And then the shot in the end from Mamiki. Didn't have the power she was looking for. And, and this is the evolution the U.S. team needs to make. In these moments where they started so strong in the first 20, they've lulled for about 15 here. Japan starts to get a hold of the game. Who on the team is going to say, OK, let's go. We've got seven, five minutes here, seven minutes before the end of the half. Let's take this game back and try and get one going into the half at 2-0. And I haven't seen that player yet who can grab the ball and connect the dots and really pull the strings for them and say, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, there's a, a different mood to the game. Now there's Carly Lloyd. We need three goals to reach a century for the United States. And maybe to be fair, it shouldn't be just one player, but I can you know, recall back in the day, it was three or four of you all of a sudden that are giving you a lift. And, and I think with experience, you start to recognize those moments when you need a lift. Lloyd. up the high tempo that we saw in the first 15 minutes or so of the game. Dahl Kemper, Taylor Smith. Another chance for her. And the crowd have gone a little bit quiet as well. They've turned out in good numbers here. Looks like a crowd of around 25,000, something like that anyway. I've counted them all yet. It's a little bit ethereal. We played that we called the last match in the stadium that the Chargers always played in. The field looked perfect because they haven't had any games on it at Qualcomm. <laughs> and now we're calling in the stadium they're going to be playing in. Saturday at 12.25 p.m. Eastern. We'll have a great pre-season friendly for you. The ICC presented by Heineken. It spurs against the Italian champions Juventus live from Wembley Stadium. It'll be live, streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Tottenham Hotspur will be playing all their home games at Wembley this season while their White Hart Lane ground is renewed. New stadium just 200 yards away, and it'll be fantastic too. Japan ranked sixth in the world at the moment. Ranking may flatter them just a little, and what we've seen here. Short to press. Now Sam Mewis, the tall, elegant midfield player. Rapino. Haji, who's been busy. That's her second cap. Sakaguchi's long ball. Trying to pick out Tanaka's good run. Tanaka has made some good runs. Sometimes to no avail. She hasn't always managed to finish off the chances she's created here on the West Coast this last week. Did get one against Brazil. That was one where the ball just hit her and went in, though. Off her shoulder. She'll tell you a different story, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Strikers always do. Look in, the, look in the newspaper the next day. Or I should say on, on the on the website or something nowadays, shouldn't I? Uh, seemingly none the worse for her brush with the post. To Becky Sauerbrunn. Japan playing a very high line. US has yet to really punish him for it, especially at the end of this half. We do have the pace to get him behind is Mallory Pugh. 
Tried to hold her back. Still got the ball, Pew. This one player we haven't seen here because of a hamstring injury is Rose Lavelle. Very promising. So she'll be back pretty soon. Back training again, I hear. News today that, uh, well, you know her. Great American goalkeeper, Brianna Scurry, yes. into the Hall of Fame. So awesome. First African-American woman to get inducted into the U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame and long overdue. That should have happened a while ago. Congratulations, Bri. That's awesome. And while we're at it, how is Tiffany Milbert not in there as well? 100 goals. There's only five women in all of U.S. soccer who have over 100 goals. She's one of them. The other three, Mia Hamm. Well, let's start at the top. Abby Wambach who isn't yet eligible for the Hall of Fame ba ballot. Mia Hamm, Christine Lilly, and Michelle Akers. All of them are in the Hall of Fame. Come on, people! You're leading the campaign, and you've done it very well here. <laughs> Samashima. Trying to curl one towards the top corner. It was ambitious. Coming up at half time, we'll have a profile of Carly Lloyd, a storied career. Australia Brazil highlights and there were seven goals to show you from that and Megan Rapino continuing to be a torchbearer for the US Last minute of the first half very good goal from Megan Rapino His pew Good looking ball, and she was entitled to think somebody might have been attacking that area, really. Corner kick to the US, chance to nick a second right on the brink of half time. And this is an area where the US has had so much success against Japan, obviously. Height advantage, size advantage, physicality. You got Ertz, you got Mewis. Those two right in the center of your screen are the targets. That's as good in the air. It was beyond her, though. She'd made that little near post run, maybe looking to just flick one on. Win or a draw will ensure the US do finish second to Australia in this tournament, which they would have hoped to win. But the Aussies have been good. That's the bottom line. Here's Mamiki. Sam Kerr continued her form we've seen with the NWSL. 11 goals, she's been playing so well. She looked great over these three games. But they've got a lot of talent on that team as well alongside her. Lewis and offside against Kristen Press. That will be infuriating to Jill Ellis and the coach, really, that the uh, attack ended that tamely. Strikers have to bend their run. Stoppage time, and I think really once this is taken, the Canadian referee will probably blow for a break and a chance for everybody to rehydrate on a hot night here just south of LA. Reset and try and get that rhythm back, a little urgency back as well in that second half of the U.S. Good goal from Megan Rapino, putting Jill Ellis' side ahead. For the first 15, 20 minutes, they were very impressive, but Japan have just got back into the argument a bit. When we return, we'll get a profile of Carly Lloyd. Half-time here, USA 1, Japan 0. Along the way. More importantly for the moment is the US with a job to do against Japan. They lead, it's a fragile lead, I'd have to say at the moment, by a goal to nil. And a couple of substitutions being made by Japan. They're going to bring in the uh, wide player, Yui Hasagawa, who we've seen quite a bit of in this tournament, and the left back, Hikaru Kitagawa, for her third cap, the 20 year old. Looks like Mania might be one of those two come off and Nakajima as well. Any USA changes you can see, Julie? 
Well, most important for Japan right now, too, is that they think they have a chance in this, right? They're still in this game. And I'm certain we're going to see some USA changes, none yet. But as Jill Ellis has said over and over, this is one of the last opportunities she feels like to continue this process and has said after this tournament, I start I will start to shore up my formations, my lineups, especially as you get closer into qualifiers. Of course, you want to do that. But she said, I gave myself through the Tournament of Nations to continue with this looking. The USA in red and Carly Lloyd brings that down quite impeccably and couldn't quite finish it. That would have been some goal had she managed to do so. Abby Dahlkamper with that ball and look at that first touch. Brings it down, just going away from goal a little bit. Leaning back a hair, but that's the position you want a Carly Lloyd in. And I think that's the position we're going to see her more and more of. It looks like she might be deployed a little further forward in this second half. You mentioned in the first half, Ian, Carly being almost 37, 36, at almost the turn of 37 for that World Cup in 2019. And I think that's a lot to ask as a box-to-box -box midfielder, of course. So I think what you're going to see her is in that higher forward position or higher attacking midfield role. Yeah, I feel a bit graceless mentioning a, a woman's age like that, but it, it, you know, it's a fact that has to be faced, and it, it's a question just of adapting, really, to make the best use of her, isn't it? You know, and a lot of it depends just it's so different from player to player. I mean, look at, at Christy Rampone, Christy Pierce for how many years the U.S. got out of her and playing so well into her late 30s, 40. Ball was well won by Kitagawa, who's just come on. Sugi stays at the back for the time being. Is Sumida, who's a central midfield player they like for the future. They've started her twice now in this tournament. Then the ball is given away in the midfield. Rapino not quite able to thread it through for Carly Lloyd. Samashima. High press from the U.S. there, nearly paid off. I think Rapino was a little slow to press on that, though. Press is going. She sees her high, and it takes her a, a hair. Carly's going with her, too. But So th those are the type of opportunities they got to press on and win it higher. U.S. is for Papu, who is a bit jet-heeled. You saw it there. Found a good ball. Press here! Good chance. Goes begging. And press so good in these situations. Top of the box. All she's looking for is a little window. Just give her a half window, and she's trying to find that upper corner. I've seen her finish many of those. She's played a little too short for Pew that time. It's another fast start to the half from the United States. Question of whether they can sustain that in this kind of heat. Dahl Kemper. Another telegraphed idea anyway, and Taylor Smith never really did break into the space behind. Kitagawa to lay it forward, helped on by Julie Ertz towards Kristen Press. One back by Taylor Smith there. It's carried away to some purpose. And Japan can't get out. USA playing very, very high, not letting Japan build from the back. Rapino. Lloyd was dispossessed by Sumida. Free kick to Japan.
chance of USA ringing around the stadium here at the Stab Hut. Sunida doing well. And Sakaguchi again and looks all class and quality every time she gets on the ball. Very much the uh, midfield general. Lovely football here. Oh, and a save by Ney. She didn't quite get hold of that, the substitute Hasegawa. And there's the beauty of what Japan can do. Still in this great little sequence by them. And really two good looks for the United States to try and separate in this game. Carly Lloyd early, Kristen Press after that. Sakaguchi to lay it forward. I just wonder what the effect would be if Japan put Utsugi into the midfield alongside, whether they've got anyone to take her place in the defence is questionable. Nicely laid off by Tanaka. Kasegawa. US rather gave it away. And it's a poor and rather speculative long-range effort in the end uh, from uh, Ren Sumida. The final of the European Women's Championship will be between the Netherlands and Denmark, who both won their semi-finals today. 10.30 a.m. on ESPN2 for that one. The Netherlands were 12th and Denmark 15th in the world rankings before the tournament began. Nobody but nobody, probably not in the Netherlands or Denmark, thought they'd be in the final. They are. Casey Short dispossessed by the hard-working Momiki. Nicely forward by Samida to Hasegawa. And we've seen a couple of times in this game that Japan can put together the kind of move that can really unzip any defense. They can they have these 10 pass sequences that are gorgeous and as we were talking about in the first half, just that finishing touch of no Sawa, no Miyama, some of the best players in the game finishing, and who's going to fill that hole for Japan? I think that's the last part of the equation for them, or the most important part of the equation. Sakaguchi again. Finds another good ball. Haji, it's tame, really, and a lot of the shooting has lacked yeah, devil. And it's hopeful, isn't it? far too optimistic for some of the ranges there in plain language hit it <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a mix up there in the defense it nearly let Kristen press in that's has got another problem now she's been in the wars a little bit tonight the collision with the post a heroic piece of defending Ali Long looks to be ready to go, and here, here it is. Hmm. She did something stretching, didn't she, really, there, by the look of it. And that might be the cue for the US to introduce the central midfield player, Ali Long, from the Portland Thorns Club. Be the end of it for for Julia. It's, yeah, she's struggling. She's well, we're not a shift tonight, not, hasn't she? Yeah, she has. And Japan would be level without uh, covering in the first half, so that change has to be made. I think she made a good case too for herself at that holding central midfield position. Coming in that second half against Brazil, giving him a lift, getting the game winner. Another good performance today, tonight, to keep the U.S. with a 1-0 lead. Flag was up so that Japan will get a free kick. It's a feeling the U.S. need the cushion of an, another goal. Absolutely. And they... And Again, I look to who who on this group is going to take the team by the scruff and say, let's go. He started good. 
Can they consistently string it together? And that's the challenge I, I know for every team, to be fair, and especially in 2017, two, th two years out. But it's these moments that give you so much great experience when you're tested this way of, okay, now can we make a difference and separate here? I wonder whether Ali Krieger is going to see any action at all in this tournament. She hasn't been used so far. Neither has Margaret Purse of Boston Breakers, who was called in, still awaiting her debut. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen Krieger at all. And I know Jill says, I, kn I know what I get in Krieger, and I'm, I'm trying other players, but especially with O'Hara going out early, I thought that was the perfect opportunity for Krieger to get a little, some minutes since she hasn't in these first two games. Again, Sakaguchi won it, then Tanaka with nice control. And again, that last ball is a long way from Japan's usual high standards. Sauerbrunn. Mewis was nice and composed there. So it's the Mewis long axis in central midfield. Again, that hasn't always quite looked like working. That's no disparagement to either player. It's just style-wise a, a tad similar. Well, and especially, uh, I think so much of it depends what, where Mewis then finds herself. She's got to stay higher. Here's Rapino. Press and Pew waiting in the middle. Mewis. Now here's Ali Long. Now Taylor Smith. Looks much more confident after a couple of caps behind her, doesn't she, Taylor Smith? Now she's come on as a sub here when Kelly O'Hara got ill. Pew's been a bit quiet today in this tournament, really. She had her, she's had flashes, but... I haven't seen her taking on as much and beating that back line as much and turning the corner as we're used to seeing. It's often the way with young players, isn't it? They've gone a terrific run and then maybe there's a little lull and then move forward again. Taylor Smith got a cross away there. She's getting forward to some effect here and there down that right-hand side. Here she is again now. Away by uh, Kasegawa. I think I can see really where the, the coach Jill Ellis is coming from, playing Taylor Smith, not Ali Krieg. She wants to have a look and see if there's someone else who's in the mix long term. Yeah, and that's clearly a position that has been giving her some angst with all the different players she's been floating through there. Lloyd's crossfield ball to our old mate Megan Rapino flag up. Because the USA operating in this era without a goal scorer like Abby Wombach to lean on. Bound to make a bit of a difference. No Shannon Box players like that anymore. And Lauren Holiday. His press. Turning, twisting, shooting. It's a good block in the end. But Sugi got in the way. I mean, while you're on it, we started making a list of some of the that they're missing. Tobin Heath, we talked about earlier, who's watching this game. Rose Lavelle, of course, we've mentioned. Andy Sullivan is a great one who plays in that holding central midfield position. Plays at the fine institution of Stanford University. Coming back from an ACL injury. But there has been a bit of a reality check this year for the USA women's team, no doubt about that. Beaten by France and England at the She Believes Cup, the uh, tournament earlier on in the year, and beaten by Australia here. And, and that's the challenge of this. Yes, you want to be experimenting and tinkering and doing these things, but you also have to be winning, because then you start seeing the frustration on some of the players as well of, hey, these teams aren't fearing us anymore. You see those kind of comments. There's a poor ball by Kasegawa there. 
Pugh's in behind here, and that's two. Splendidly worked on the break. Mallory Pugh with the goal comes alive with a very, very convincing finish. She must have heard us, Ian. And there it is, Taylor Smith with a nice little ball in. Perfectly paced. Pugh does very well to calmly find her angle. She looks up, slots it home. Yamashita still on her way out when she hit this one. Never set, really. Able to beat her on the near post. And that's the Mallory Pugh we've seen for the last two years with this women's national team. Fifth international goal for her country for the 19-year-old, of whom big things are expected. But what a peach of a pass from Taylor Smith as well. And now there's a bit of clear water for the United States. Lloyd looking to get this one in behind. You saw the electric pace of Mallory Pugh, and the expectation would be really that she's only going to get better in the next couple of years. And you love a player that wants to take on like that, that wants to face up, get in the box. And I think that's the thing you see a lot of on this team. You got a lot of these wide players. Very creative. Heath likes to play out wide when she's back. Rapino, of course, out wide. We, we've talked to, to Megan Rapino about that number 10 position. <laughs> you know, how about you in that number 10? Because I really think that's that's the one position this, this team needs to fill is figuring out who that number 10 position is. She gave us a charming and quite long answer, but I think it amounted to no. <laughs> Don't fancy it. <laughs> I think she'd be good in it. Getting her more touches on the ball is always a good thing. And out wide, it's... You know, you sometimes get lost in a game. He said, ah, I'm more comfortable out wide. Are her and Tobin Heath contesting the same spot in the team? I think you have to have both of them on the field if they're playing the form that Tobin left in and that Rapino's in. You make space for that. But they both definitely are, are wide players. I think Tobin could tuck in in this three and play in that high midfield spot as well in a 4-3-3. But I think this is going to be the system. Jill has gone from a three back earlier on and she believes. We saw how that turned out. The three nil loss to France. She went with a four back after that, and it, which was a 4-4-2. And now we're seeing her in this 4-3-3. Momiki to Haji. It's a lovely move this so far from Japan. Naya did enough there. Getting out quickly as Tanaka closed in. I have to say that was good goalkeeping. Otherwise, You'd have fancied that Tanaka would have just dinked that over her and into the net. Yeah, Nair getting a look here. Watch where she is in her starting position. Those are painful. It's a better moment there. Was the last involvement for the striker Mina Tanaka to be replaced by Kumi Yokoyama, who was prolific with four goals in four matches at the Algarve Cup earlier this year. And going into the tournament, she'd scored in five of Japan's last seven games. She did score in a 3 3 draw between the USA and Japan in a friendly last year in an Olympic warm up for the US. There was another game between the two teams last year around that time where the US were 2 0 up and the game had to be abandoned a quarter of an hour from the end because of heavy storms. Well, what's interesting in this tournament, as you've seen, those two actually playing together, Yokoyama and Tanaka, and that pairing up front. Yokoyama's diminutive, but quite clever. His pew again should be lifted by that goal. No question about it. It was almost as if she was hearing what we were saying up here, wasn't it? <laughs> Just that. kidding, Val. <laughs> 
I told this story earlier in the first game, but when I asked her, uh, Mallory Pugh, how it was for the, the transition into the pro game with Washington Spirit. Coran coming in for Lloyd here. Yeah, that'll be a like for like switch. I thought she was going to talk about the pace of play or something <laughs> that else, soccer wise. And she's like, I've never lived on my own before. <laughs> it's a, quite a shock. I'm a very social person. I thought that was so adorable. So her solution is she FaceTimes everyone while she's cooking. So that's a great solution. Captain's armband has gone to Becky Sabra, and as Carly Lloyd comes off. And Lindsay Horan of Portland Thorns is on. Playmaking type. Japan seeking the goal, which would get them back into this argument. Sean Torapino. Samashina nicked the ball away, almost pickpocketed it. And Haran played in that higher position prior in the tournament alongside Press in the first game. And now you see her playing in a higher central midfield role. She's played in both, but plays mostly in that role for Portland. Played at PSG instead of going to North Carolina, decided to play professionally in France, was the first to ever turn down a scholarship like that. Can play very well in tight spaces in the middle of the field right there. That's a good spot for her. It's quite a brave decision to go to Europe at a comparatively early stage. She's now got 37 caps for the USA. Only 23 still. Sakaguchi, it's been a pleasure watching her play at times. Haji. And it's just not too long in the end by Hasegawa. Great game coming to you on Saturday at 12.25 p.m. Eastern. It's the ICC presented by Heineken and it's Spurs taking on the Italian champions Juventus from Wembley Stadium. It'll be streaming live on the ESPN app as well, a chance to see Harry Kane and Delhi Alley and all the stars of Juventus as well. Sakaguchi winning the header. Back again by Long. The USA might still have to work for this. Here's Yokoyama. Good ball in, and Haji should have scored, but didn't. Puts it wide. Big, big opportunity. What a nice first touch this is by Yokoyama. Look at that first touch that gets her, sorry, Haji, that gets her in. And they are coming off her line, because that was the perfectly placed ball. Shuts the angle down. But that's when you just got to put away. That game is flipped on its head if that one's in. It's been one of the differences here. The USA have been just a little more clinical. A couple of chances well taken. Japan have had two guilt-hedged opportunities that they've wasted. Tanaka and that latest one. And now Yokoyama's got in behind the defence here. Again, Dahl Kumpa with the recovery work. She's a bit lucky to get back there. That's two, though, that have gotten through right between Dal Comper and Sauerbrunn there. It was like one ball beats all, wasn't it, that? Which you don't want. Momiki. That was a chance for Haji to score her first ever goal for Japan. She's worked very hard here. Doesn't look like a player who's only had one cap before. Nicely round the corner, that lovely ball from Samishina towards Yokoyama, who rather wasted it. Just a bit careless at times, Japan, which wasn't like them in their days where they were making global finals.
Although the USA lead by two goals to nil, you don't feel yet this is a decisive lead, do you? I, I, I think I, I'm just not convinced there's been a real decisive performance yet in this tournament. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's good they've gotten a result here. It's great in the way they came back against Brazil, but I still feel like there's... And maybe they're just missing too many pieces of the puzzle right now as we've gone through, but it's a little bit choppy still was the word I used last yeah. game, you know? It yeah. Good in patches, good in little cameos. Yeah, and maybe that's too much to ask in 2017, but it's, you know, that's the standard. That is the United States team. You're the number one in the world with millions of girls playing, and that's... That's what you want to see, because so that every time a team steps on the field, there, there's a fear factor there. Yeah, not, not being unkind to say that they're, they're glad the World Cup isn't next week. I'm glad there is still a couple of years, plenty of time. There's no need. Yeah, to and panic. there's no need to panic, and I am certainly not doing that, you know. But I and I think it's a healthy reminder that there's a lot of work to be done. There's a fair bit of talent around, though. You, not the least, and press. Rapino has taken a deflection. It's probably a corner. Yeah, I thought so. Third goal for the USA, you feel, really would put it to bed. Well, you, you, <laughs> I hesitate to make predictions after what happened the other night. Twist in the tail. Played long. It's a wonderful opportunity there for Horan on the back post. I think she was a bit surprised he got that far. Uh, typically, Horan great with her head in these situations. I mean, this one probably, as you said, a little surprised it made it all the way through, but just didn't connect at all on that. Typically, much better in that situation. Well, mass changes now for the USA. Alex Morgan's going to come on. Lynn Williams as well, who scored against Germany earlier on in the year. And uh, the popular Sydney LaRue, whose husband, Dom Dwyer, scored in the All-Star game against Real Madrid this week. An eventful couple of weeks for him there. Heading out to Orlando, of course, to play with them, too. Press, Rapino and Pugh. So two of the goal scorers there coming off. Here's the two goals again for you, in case you're late tuning in. The ball in from Press to Rapino. She fires, she gets the Samashima down on the ground, and what a nice finish that is. I can watch that one over and over. And then Smith on the other side with the perfectly paced ball into Pew, who slots it nicely. Two good goals. Nothing freaky about those. All the substitutions being used now by the US. Kelly O'Hara had to go on quite early, uh, off the pitch early on with illness on a hot night. And I, I go back to what I was saying about just being a little bit disheartened in, in terms of the, the consistency. I look at Australia in this tournament and they're playing with a fire that's obvious, right? It's, it's, they are all over the place. They're scrapping, they're winning balls, they're playing nice soccer, and that's the level this team should certainly be at. Well, it's given away in midfield. And Japan do exactly the same and promptly give it back again. Here's Casey Short. Got a lot of pace. Morgan. Going to battle for her place in the team these days. Just a slight lull in her starry career. Taylor Short. On and on and on she goes. <laughs> really looking to put her name in lights. She's looking at fancy bending one into the far corner off the outside of the boot. Taylor Smith, of course, on that right hand side. Sorry for the uh, slip of the tongue. I, I called her Taylor Swift yeah, earlier, so that's okay. <laughs> Merging the players. <laughs> that's my 10 year old Izzy has been calling her Taylor Swift. I blame Izzy. 
Told you it was a hot night. <laughs> <laughs> it's short. Then again, I blame my kids for everything, Ian. Lewis. Goalkeeper, oh, he's clattered in midair. That Now that is a foul on the goalkeeper. No doubt about that one. Poro Giamashita. Williams trying to get on the end of that one. Easy call for the referee. And he used to allow that sort of thing in about 1958, <laughs> but not now. <laughs> I mean, but that's the beauty of the United States is look at the firepower they get off their bench with all the depth. You got LaRue, Morgan, Lynn Williams, top goal scorer in the league last year. Haran coming off the bench. Mambiki, Sankaguchi. Moran. Sakaguchi again. And Yokoyama couldn't make it stick, which would have been annoying for the midfield player, having threaded it through to her. That means the attack breaks down. Alex Morgan's ball inside. She hasn't scored in the last eight USA games that she's played in, Alex Morgan. Surely only a matter of time before she picks up the threads again. Haji has done well. Kisigawa on the overlap and throw held by Neo. She had to hold that as well because the Predators were waiting. Yeah, great hold by Neo. on by Williams. USA 2, Japan 0. And for a through ball that wasn't really quite on there, with Yokoyama trying to break into the space. That's a nice piece of work in the midfield, that by Horan. Short, gobbling up the ground as she moves forward. Chance to shoot. Blocked by Ichise on the way through. Horan. Looking for the one-two on the edge of the box. Still might be something. Another long-range special from Mewis, who scored the other night with something similar. And watching this game, very happy they are too. The Australian players, congratulations to the Matildas, who are the champions of this tournament. They knew that before this game began. They can't go down to LAX just down the road and get on a plane yet because they've got to pick up the trophy. Happy plane home, that I would think. Williams here with a bit of space Morgan waiting in the middle instead it's cut back and uh, well the trouble is there was nobody really there not there anyway not that exact point I think that was Haran's instinct was to try and get in on the far post wide and I think that's the one thing that that gap in the middle there again in that high attacking center midfield position just filling in those seams Yu Nakasoto player who plays for the champions, Belesa. The name means beauty, apparently, from the champions of Japan. Yet another language you can speak? <laughs> if only. <laughs> Abidal Kemper. Now Bronto lay it forward to Long. Dal Kemper.
LaRue. Been used very sparingly in this tournament. That's a nice ball through. Crane in there and Morgan ends a gold round. Alex Morgan. 3 0. And that puts a much more convincing gloss on the scoreline. Taylor Smith again setting up a goal. What a nice ball this is in by Mewis. And Taylor with the pace, when you put it like that, you just have to get a little bit of a deflection on it, really. Helped there by Samashima on the ground, taking a deflection off her. But that's a nice ball in by Taylor Smith. And Alex Morgan with the finish in the right place, making a good run. Not much Yamashita can do with it deflecting off Samashita there. Samashima on the ground. 128 caps, 74 goals for Alex Morgan. Great for Alex, too, to get that out. Similar to Rapino in that Brazil game, she'd got 18 games, which is incredible given her strike rate with and how well she's been doing with the NWSL. But to be fair, had been just coming off the bench, coming off that injury a lot of those games. That'll feel good for Alex Morgan. Lovely ball in again, though. And it's been a revelation of a performance here from Taylor Smith. We were saying she'd done OK without kind of ripping up too many trees. But the confidence is there mm -hmm. to express herself in this game. And, and uh, she's, she's grabbed the opportunity. And clearly the pace. Yep. Forward by Yokoyama. Smith again here. USA have bit by bit made a better impression as this tournament has gone on. The three goals they've scored tonight have all been wonderfully executed, really. Sumida back to Sakaguchi. Kitagawa. And, and this is the exact win you need when you come off that loss, you come off the emotional high of then coming back against Brazil, and you always wonder after that emotional surge how you're going to react. I mean, that gets exhausting in itself. They were staring a two-goal, sorry, two-game in a row, home loss, four for the year for the United States, which has never happened before. And you could see the emotion with them coming back against Brazil. Always wondered how they were going to react tonight. Not rally long in midfield there. Morgan picks it up again. And uh, the referee just wants to make sure that Ali Long is OK and that there wasn't any kind of head injury involved. I don't think it is. Check again here. Going up with Sakaguchi there. Right on the back of her head, it looked like. Yeah, referees are instructed to stop the game straight away in the event of a head injury for, for obvious reasons that you'll know about. It's shaken up a bit, but uh, OK to continue by the look of it. Ali Long. Gino Tomari forward coming on for a debut for Japan. Any moment now, anyway. It'll be Haji who will make way. Made a pretty good impression and will feel she should have scored. Yeah, she had that great look. When Nair forced her wide.
She might add to her two caps, though, on what we saw yeah, this evening. Definitely. Very much in a transitional stage, Japan. They didn't really make it to the Olympic Games, didn't qualify last year. That's Casey Short's effort. Might have gone anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Goalkeeper's off the line. Aya Samashina allowed it to go out of play. 80th cap for Samashima. I think if you're Jill Ellis too, you go, okay, listen, look at, let's look at this. They, they come out with the early loss, disappointed by that. They have the, the three goal comeback, which is a huge lift. And now you get a solid three nil win against this team. And you end on a high note and she knows there's lots to work on. You got to look at different formations, though. You got to look at different outside backs, different center back pairings, different forward pairings. Goran to help it through. Forward by Mewis, then Sydney LaRue's in here! Great save by the goalkeeper. Otherwise, LaRue would have been on the score sheet. Oh, and she wanted that one. What a great story that would be coming back from having her son, the weak Dom's had. Score as well. Just trying to get on the end of that, and Yamashima getting a great. Yamashita getting a great hand save. What a reaction save that is. That is absolutely world class, that save, because she actually reacted. It didn't just hit her. Strong hand. Good handling as well. And suddenly they will be thinking, how did she get that? <laughs> Last few minutes, the USA are going to finish second in this tournament behind Australia with uh, Brazil and Japan rather left trailing. Kitagawa recovering well to deny LaRue on that side. I think the big revelation for everyone was how good Australia is going to be in this <laughs> in these next two years. But they, they brought a lot of players with over 50 caps who'd played Olympics, World Cup. And when, when you looked at it, it kind of made sense that they would be a, a strong presence at this yeah, event. But the crazy thing is all those players, so many of them are 22, 23. I mean, they've started mm. very young. They've been playing together for four years, so they have that experience as well. And then when you have players, I thought a Van Eggman was so good and a Kerr playing so well. I mean, you got a lot of personalities on that field. Yeah, you think they might kick on from that? Here's Williams. I think one thing that is good about this USA side is there's a lot of pace around in it. Long. Morgan. Williams, Morgan wants it back again, around the edge of the box. Forearm turn, but only turned into trouble in the end, and Yokoyama has it now for Japan, who really their best hope now is just a consolation late on. That's nicely worked. Yokoyama playing it forward to the uh, recent substitute, Shino Tomari. Speaking of pace, Ian, Taylor Smith there with the recovery. She's had an outstanding match, no question about it. Was Taylor Smith. Mewis looked to just thread that through the eye of the needle for Morgan. Bit of confidence about the US's work here late on now. The pressure that they were feeling after the Australia defeat has been eased a little bit by more recent developments. Short. Sakaguchi. I've enjoyed watching her play tonight, I have to say. Mizuo Sakaguchi in that midfield. That's her. Just pulls the string so yeah. nicely, doesn't she? Just pings the passes around. If they had a few more like her, I think uh, the rest of the world had better watch out. 
a little bit on the hurried side there from Hasegawa. They want the clean sheet now, the United States. They want the shutout to go with the win. Morgan, just wonder what a goal will do for a striker's confidence. Here she is on the ball again now. Casey Shaw up to Sydney LaRue. USA now pushing the ball around quite pleasingly. Dal Kemper. Sheila Ellis will be enjoying this. This is uh, how many passes in a row? Probably best part of 30. Short to play this one in. The end was a bit disappointing, but uh, there was a lot of composure about the build-up work. OK, against a maybe tiring Japan now. Asagawa, Sakaguchi again. Tough one to control. And it'll be interesting to hear Jill Ellis's reflections on the tournament as a whole what's the main thing she should take from it I, I think as I was as I was saying you know you you got to look at that outside back position you got to look at some of your pairings in the center back and four position I think the main thing is I think she likes this formation the best this 4-3-3 three, three. Um, and then when you start getting some of the, some more pieces of the puzzle back then you can start putting your top lineups in and that experimental phase I think is about to to end Good win tonight for Jill Ellis and her team. Alex Morgan has ended her scoring drought and is relieved. A very fine performance from Taylor Smith coming on as a substitute at right back quite early in the game, doing very, very well and setting up two of the goals with some excellent balls in. And the USA have beaten Japan, their old rivals in recent years. There'll be a trophy celebration. To follow all of this, it'll go to Australia. USA will finish second. Megan Rapino starred again, and the USA have a smile back on those faces. Join us in a moment for the trophy lift. Final score here, it's a good one for the USA, beating old rivals Japan by three goals to nil. Megan Rapino getting the first goal to get the USA underway and uh, played pretty well in the second half. Here are the goals again with Julie. Press with that ball in on the counter. Look at this ball into Rapino. Gets Shamashima to go on the ground. What a beauty that is. It gets her to totally bite and has the composure to and then come back across the goal. Then Taylor with a nice ball into Pew finds the slot. Smith with the assist. Good game for her. And then again, Smith here getting that inline ball cross for Morgan to end that goal scoring drought. Those were the three for the United States tonight. Smith with two of the assists. Alex Morgan needs a couple more to uh, go past Cindy Parlo to the number seven slot on the all time US scorers list. For those of you who like those uh, statistics. So what looked like it might be a pretty troublesome tournament of nations for the US after that defeat by Australia, they've kind of rescued the situation. Absolutely. I think that's a great result in the end. And Jill Ellis got to do exactly what she wanted to do, which was continue the process. We've heard her say that over and over again and get a look and see these players under pressure and see them against 
the top 10 in the world. And when you host a tournament, as the United States has done twice, and there's Sidney LaRue's kid, yeah. Cassius. How cute is he? He is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> When you host two tournaments like they have. Kiss for mom there, Megan Rapino giving a cuddle. <laughs> nice things. World Cup still two years away. And the next Olympics three years away. So this event will be uh, will be covered next year. Let's go our PI announcer, Fernando Gonzalez, US for the trophy presentation. World Cup champion and former U.S. Women's National Defender, Joy Fawcett. Football Federations Australia's okay. and World Cup champion, former women's national team midfielder, Tisha Vinterini Hogue. The dignitaries will now present the championship medals to the national team of Australia. So congratulations to Australia, winners of the first ever Tournament of Nations, an event which will be repeated in any year where there is not a big global championship. Just a reminder of the final score, USA claiming second place in this event with a convincing 3-0 win over Japan. The next one's game is on September the 15th against New Zealand in the Denver area. Thank you for watching. Tonight's been good to be with you. From Julie Fowley, and me, Ian Dark. Thanks for joining us in Los Angeles. We'll see you soon.